Every Wednesday we have chapel, and it's a high point of the week. Now today is kind of a high point, oh, I don't know, maybe of the year, because it's an opportunity for the faculty to do a skit as the message for today. And the skit has to do with Reformation. As you look at the chancel, you see red, reddish color. Um, and that's because there's a very special day coming this weekend, Reformation. And uh, we remember the person of Martin Luther, who in his reading of the Bible, discovered the gospel, discovered the good news, which is at the heart of the Bible, God's good news for us. And in the skit today, you'll hear about that. Now for our worship, we're going to use page 295. You may turn, well, don't turn to it now. Instead, turn to our opening hymn. Turn to 578. 578. Now we're going to sing at this time just stanzas one and two. Stanzas one and two, hymn 578. Let's stand to sing. Turn to page 295. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. My mouth is filled with your praise. O oh Lord, open my lips. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the front of your hymnal, turn to Psalm 46. We will read Psalm 46 responsively by half verses. I will read the first half of each verse, and you will read the second half. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way. Though its waters roar and foam, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. 
God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. The nations rage. The kingdoms totter. The Lord of hosts is with us. Come, behold the works of the Lord. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. Be still and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. Today's Bible reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to TED Talk with Pastor Ted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome to TED Talk with Pastor Ted. As you may have guessed, I'm Pastor Ted. And today, today, we have a very special guest with us. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Katie Luther. Well, Mrs. Luther. Oh, wait, no, no, please call me Katie. With six children underfoot in the Luther household, we are certainly not formal. Okay, Katie, Katie, please. Well, we certainly are blessed to have you with us on TED Talk today. And a reminder to our studio audience that Reformation Sunday will be this Sunday, October 31st. Now, Katie, 
You know a little something about the Reformation, don't you? Oh, yes, indeed. We remember that first Reformation Day well. It was in 1517, Pastor Ted, 504 years ago. My, how time flies. It was an unexpected adventure for sure. We would love to hear about the Reformation from your perspective, Katie. What can you share with us? Well, Pastor Ted, the story actually begins much earlier than October 31st, 1517. You see, Martin was walking to school one day when a rainstorm popped up. I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling. I'm happy again. That's right. Black clouds, super duper black clouds and thunder and lightning. Oh. oh. How awful that must have been. It was. What's worse, Martin thought that God was out to get him. You see, Back then, a lot of us thought that God was just this big bad guy with lots of rules, and we needed to follow those rules or else. What happened next? Well, Martin prayed, and he prayed that if he made it through the storm alive, he would go to monk school. That's, that's monastery. Uh, that's where the monks live, you know? Uh, I don't know where Martin... I didn't know Martin at that time, and I'm really glad because... He was much different than the Martin I've grown to love. Well, how, how was Martin different in those early days, Katie? Well, he was miserable, even at monastery. You know, he thought that the more chores he did, and the harder he worked, and the more prayers he said, that he would have a better chance of God loving him. And how silly and sad he was. Oh. Those do sound like crazy times. Well, there were lots of things we didn't know then. We thought God was out to get us instead of love us. But all that changed when Martin finally started digging. Oh, no, 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 dear, no, dear, no, dear. Digging and reading and, and teaching the Bible. Well, Katie, what did Martin discover in the Bible? Well... He discovered that many parts of the Bible actually talk about God's love as a gracious gift. And God loves us because he made us. And yes, there are times when we sin, but God loves us so much he was willing to have his son Jesus die. An act of courage and grace that triumphs over sin and allows us to be claimed by God's love forever. It is great news. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Katie, so instead of worrying every day, he, he got to celebrate every day. Instead of trying to work hard out of fear, he got to help people out of love. That, that does seem like a much better deal. Oh, that's right. Martin was certainly riding high for a while, but then he showed up. Hey, buddy, you want Studio 9. This is Studio 7. Oh, so sorry, my bad. Well, his name was Jonathan Tetzel. had an incredible job, an unbelievable mission. He was trying to raise a bunch of money for the people in Rome at the church, and they decided to play on people's fears. That is terrible, Katie. Oh, Tetzel, he kept talking about hell, and this place sort of like hell called purgatory. Yeah, I said I stay out of hell until we buy coins. 
Well. Well, before anyone, before anyone could go to heaven, they had to go and pay their dues in purgatory. Tetzel preached this even though the Bible doesn't talk about it. Oh, so everyone was worried. Te Trinity, I see you already have them in the front pew. Oh. But Tetzel had an offer. If you paid money, he said, you could buy an indulgence. An indulgence kept you out of purgatory, he said. An indulgence could actually get your dead loved ones out of purgatory. In fact, Tetzel made up a little rhyme that he used to explain his offer. What I Martin, he knew none of it was true. Oh, he had been reading the Bible, so he knew it didn't talk about purgatory at all. He knew that Jesus died for our sins and that we were already forgiven. He knew Jesus didn't ask us for money. He knew Jesus saved us already because he loved us. That's right, Katie. But the people back in our Germany didn't know the good news, did they? No, they didn't. And many of them bought those indulgences. And it was horrible because many of them were so poor. Oh, right over here. Right over here. Instead of buying enough food for their families, they used their money to buy those worthless indulgences. It made Martin so mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Katie, this is getting good. Well, that's when Martin started writing. Oh, back in, your, back in our day, we didn't have those fancy smartphones and email and Facebook. We didn't have those things. And so if you wanted to let people know something, you could post it on the church door, the, the Wittenberg church door. So Martin took his 95 thesis, telling all the reasons why he thought Mr. Tetzel was wrong, and he posted it on the Wittenberg church door. He didn't want anyone to think they had to buy God's love. Got him. Mmm. Reese's. Tasty, delicious. Oh, no, 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 dear, no, dear. Not 95 Reese's. 95 Thesis. Thesis. Oh! <laughs> well, that's too bad. <laughs> because of Martin's controversial teaching, he was ordered to attend a special meeting of the national leaders in. It's called a Diet, and it was in the German city of Worms. Those 95 theses and all my other writings got me in trouble. The Pope ordered me to come to this special hearing where I would have to defend myself. All the bigwigs were there. The Holy Roman Emperor himself. They had all my books lined up, and they told me I had to recant, which means take it back. But I knew I wasn't wrong. In the end, I just couldn't take back what I thought was true about God's love. So when they asked me the final time if I would recant, I said, unless I am convinced by the testimony of holy scriptures or by evident reason, 
I cannot and will not recant. Because acting against one's conscience is neither safe nor sound. Here I stand. God help me. Amen. Here I stand. Martin, we are so grateful you took a stand like that. Oh, but the trouble didn't end right away, did it, dear? Oh, we were so scared about you arriving home safely. Rumor had it, Martin would not make it back to Wittenberg alive. Oh. So, I was kidnapped on the road by some strangers who were actually friends. It was a friendly kidnapping. And instead of hurting me, they took me to the Warburg Castle. about a full year. I was safe, but in order to keep my identity secret, I grew my hair longer than usual and I grew a beard. And then I began to translate the Bible into German. Martin, today we take our Bibles for granted, but back then your translation was a huge gift to the world. Oh, Pastor Ted, the point Martin and I are trying to make is that we were taught to think God was cold and full of rules and life was nothing but just following those rules. But then we learned that God's life is so beautiful. Every day is a thank you for all his love and gifts. And we need to take a stand wherever we are and do our best. Well, Katie and Martin, thank you for letting us share this time with you today. And to the members of our studio audience, there's a special gift for you. It's a new cookbook by Katie Luther. It's called Herring is Caring. <laughs> Herring is Caring. One for you, and you get one, and you get one, and you get one, and you get one. Well, it is a pleasure to stand here with you and share our story with you. But each of you has a terrific story, too. And with God's help, you too will be able to take the stands you need to make a difference for God's kingdom. May, May God, God bless you. you. We will sing A Mighty Fortress is Our God, 656. We'll sing stanzas one and four. We stand to sing.
You may sit down. We'll bring our offerings forward today with the chairs in the chancel. Um, I would ask those bringing offerings forward to just leave them on the uh, communion rail. Let's again stand and confess our Christian faith using the Apostles' Creed. This can be found in your hymnal in the inside back cover. Together we confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As our Lord has taught us, we join in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Turn again to him. 578 will sing stanzas three and four.
You may be seated. Morning, everybody. So we know this isn't right. We go to heaven because Jesus died and rose for us. That's how we get to heaven, right? So Tetzel was kind of messed up. Mrs. Paul, you want to join me up here? <laughs> Forgot something. Forgot something. To make. I missed faculty meeting this morning, you guys, so I don't know what I'm doing. Good morning. Um, this month is Pastor Appreciation Month, so Pastor Growth, please come here. Um, we want to express our deepest appreciation and deepest gratitude, and we know that what we see is only the very tip of the iceberg for all you do. So we hope you know how much we truly, truly appreciate you and how much we love having you here. So let's give uh, Pastor Growth a round of applause. And we all wanted to show you. Sorry, yes, keep it going. Um, we all wanted to show you how much we appreciate you, and this is just a small token of the great gratitude we have for you and your family. Oh, they left already. But your family is a great blessing to us, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's a joy to do it. 